How are you doing today? Welcome to this session. Yes, and today I will be talking to you about how your geographical lens is actually impeding your study abroad prospects, your study abroad success, your ability to clearly and uh, to clearly get what you are looking for when it comes to study abroad. How is your geographical lens affecting that? First of all, uh, I, 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 also, I'm going to talk about that and then I'm going to talk, tell you about how you can correct it, which is what? Get a mentor. But don't just take this headline and run with it. How your geographical lens is impeding your study abroad process and how you can solve it by getting a mentor. Don't just take it and run away with it, okay? I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean by that and how the solution I'm asking you to get is going to help you solve the problem. Now, we all know that uh, as an adult, you have seen things, you have experienced things. When you go to another place or when you're trying to do something else, you don't start from zero. You start from your experience, the experiences you have. Let me give you an example. Let's say you, you, let's say you are from, you, let's say you're a, you're a Ghanaian, all right? And you have been in Kumasi all your life. Now, one day... In Kumasi, you do a lot of things. You go to a place, you attend events, you, you get a hotel, whatever the case may be. One day, you decide to go to Accra for an event, all right? When you get to Accra, what's going to happen? Let's say you need a place to stay. What do you do? Will you say, I don't know how to find a house in Accra? Or you will say, when I'm in Kumasi, I will check my phone to get a hotel close by, right? So now that I'm in Accra, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to check my phone and see the hotels nearby and I'm going to lodge there. That is the most, like, being able to do exactly what you do in Kumasi when you come to Accra is the, is the normal thing to do, true or false. It's the normal thing to do. However, when it comes to study abroad, doing that same thing that makes sense can be the worst thing you can do. Let me tell you, let me give you examples. So, for example, in your country, in your country, like my country, for example, it is not normal that as a student, you will, you, like, uh, if you need something, you go and meet the lecturer. If you, meet some, if you need something, you go and meet the professor. If you have a question about the school, you go and meet the professor. Maybe you can go to the administrative block, you know? Maybe you can ask your fellow classmates. But writing a professor is not the norm. At least where I come from, that's not the norm. But guess what? In a place like Canada, that is the norm. So when you are looking to deal with a, a Canadian professor, he or she will expect you to send them an email when you need to talk to them, right? Or when you are in trouble, including trouble that like they kicked me out of my house. The school will expect you to tell them. It, where I come from, that is not the concerns of the school. So what, the problem is that when you are using the lens in your mind, the lens of where you are coming from to deal with where you are going to, you are bound to make mistake. Like for example, all the time, most of the time when I came to Canada, I will have challenges. I won't even talk to my school. Then later they will be like, "What did you tell me?" Like, for, let me give you a simple one. I arrived school uh, before I arrived at uh, University of Waterloo. My laptop was stolen, right? So I was struggling trying to get a new laptop. Then two weeks or three weeks later, I had a meeting with my professor, and I was like, "You know, I suffered a lot to get a new laptop. This, this, this. I my laptop." And he was like, "You should have just told me. I had a spare laptop in my." In my own room. I'm like, what? You had a spell after and you have given that to me? You know, I, I had no idea. So, all the suffering that I thought I was suffering for the last one month before I spoke to him, just even because he was even asking, was not necessary. Bring it back. Let's bring it back to what you are doing today. You want to study abroad. There are things you have in your mind. In fact, some of those things are obstacles, but you don't even know that you are thinking about it from your situation. But in reality, it does, not, it, it does not apply. That obstacle does not exist. For example, some people will say, I had a 2-2. I had a second class lower. I don't think anybody is going to give me graduate admission, talk less of scholarship abroad. But this is what you think. Because maybe in your country, people with second class lower, uh, they don't even get job. Right? So you are right by thinking that way. But you are wrong because that is not what happens abroad. Abroad, your score or your grade 
is of smaller consequence. You see? So, but using the lens from your geographical location, from your country, you can miss it. You can even make it, you, you can even enter a situation where you did not even apply to a school because you think they will not accept you. So, you see, your lens, your geographical lens is, is impeding your success. Alright? So, there, there are many other ones uh, I've talked about. A scholarship i've talked about how you relate with professors some people don't, don't know that they are going to relate with professors abroad when it be, even if they are looking to go abroad to study especially if you're looking for full scholarship it is inevitable however of course advantage migration will teach you how to go about those processes right so this is where getting a mentor helps because when you get a mentor who has experience from that place where you are going to where you are thinking you want to go to what happens They'll be the one to now say, ah, you think uh, you can't get admission with tutu? No, you can't, no. See, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C got admission. So with your tutu, with your second class lower, you can get admission. This is the role of a mentor, right? A mentor can be paid, can be free, can be, it can be Dr. Linda on study abroad, but it can be somebody else, right? Just make sure, all I have to tell you is that just make sure that the mentor you have taken have done what you want to do before. If not, you, you run the risk of getting the wrong advice because your mentor is also still using the geographical lens to advise you. So make sure that your mentor is not blind. Do you get it? Like, make sure that your mentor have gone ahead, have seen what you are looking to achieve. Not just, ah, that's my mentor, I respect her so much. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You want to study abroad. Did your mentor study abroad? Yes. Okay, listen to the advice. Did your mentor study abroad? No, but he's a good man. He's a good woman. She's a good woman. I don't care. Did your mentor study abroad? Yes or no? Yes. Listen to them. No. Move fast. Even if he's the dean of your department who has not studied abroad before, but he's the person advising your study abroad matters, chances are that one or two things will be, uh, will be erroneous. erroneous. So, a mentor who has gone ahead of you, who has done what you are trying to do, can actually help you to remove the bias that you have in your mind. No, they are not necessarily wrong, it's just that they are correct for your geographical location, but they are not correct for where you are going to. And most people looking to uh, study abroad, you are leaving your country to another country. How things work in your country may not be exactly how it works in another country. How will you know? Without a mentor who has done it before, how will you know? So, don't let your geographical lens impede your study abroad success, impede your travel abroad success. And one way of not letting it is get a mentor who has done it before and listen to what they have to say, okay? And with this, you know that there's no obstacle holding you. I've seen some people that will tell me, I thought that with study abroad, I can't relocate with my husband or my wife or my kids. And I'm like, no, you can't. But somebody have waited two years just because of this thinking. One small information has saved them the next, like, the next two more years they will have even waited without doing anything. Sometimes it's just small information. But th that small information can change your life forever. So, my dear, I encourage you. I encourage you. For anything, not just, like, for study abroad, yes. For travel abroad, yes. But also for any other thing you want to do in your life. Do your best. To get a mentor who has done it before. Watch my word. I did not say get a mentor. Mm -mm. Okay, let me ask you. If you are watching this live now. What did I say? Did I say get a mentor? Or get a mentor who has done it before. Hello? There's a difference. Don't just get a mentor you trust. Don't just get a mentor you respect. Get a mentor who has done it before. That is the key secret. And they will be able to tell you exactly what to do to achieve what you're looking for. Especially if you're in a place where you feel that there's a roadblock. You are hearing this, you are hearing that. Don't let those things. Don't let those things stop you. Alright? Take good care of yourself till I see you again. Did I introduce myself to you? This is Dr. Linda. I'm an educational consultant with Vantage Migration. Myself and my team. We train graduates and professionals who want to relocate abroad on how to do that successfully through the study abroad route. We show you how to get admission, scholarship, study loan, and any other thing you need to successfully relocate abroad 
through the study abroad route. All right? Take good care of yourself again till I see you this time around. Double kiss. Ah, uh -uh. I say double. Now I've given you four. Okay, take the fifth one. <laughs>